Okay, so welcome to part two of the ET diorama. So, of course, last time we finished this closet out here, and now I'm just gonna turn my amazing little lazy Susan right on over to the back side where we are now looking at the back side of the closet. Now, of course, as you can see here, it's stark white, and we really need to get rid of that. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it black with some of my Craft Smart acrylic paint. Now, I'm just gonna do one coat because I'm gonna do a couple layers here, and now that it's generally pretty dry, I'm going to start going over it with my dark gray. The key to this is, of course, I'm just going to dry brush it on. I want to make it look very gradient, so I'm not going to be worried about it being fully covered in a total gray. I'm going to leave a lot of space. You're going to see a lot of that black. Now to the center of the closet, I am going to add on a little bit more of a thicker gray, and you'll see why here in a little bit. All right, so now that that is all on and also dry, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to start adding in trees. These are just going to be my background trees to make it look like a much thicker forest than what we actually are going to have. So I'm just adding in with my black some basically shadow trees to the background. To the center where the thicker gray is that I painted, I'm going to be also painting in trees, but they're, I'm going to make them look smaller so that they look deeper into the forest. Okay, so that gives us a nice spooky look. So of course, we're going with this outdoor scene. The scene I'm really focusing on, of course, is the forest scene where Elliot and E.T. bring his phone, the phone that he builds, out into the middle of the forest. So of course I can start sending out his signal to his people. Well, I guess they're not really people, are they? To his aliens, his alien family out there. So it is a little bit darker, and so that's why I want to make sure that this background to this diorama is a little bit darker. So now that that is all painted, I've got my tree shadows in place, basically. What I'm going to do is start working on the landscaping, the base of the diorama. And the first thing I want to do is get out my hot glue and a couple pieces of tin foil, and I'm going to start sculpting the tin foil and gluing it to the base of my Lazy Susan. Now, when Elliot and E.T. are in the forest, there's this very distinct rock where they set the phone on the phone contraption that's made out of a couple different things, and they got and they got their umbrella over to the side, which is what they're makeshifting as a satellite dish, basically. So that kind of sets to the side. And what I want to do is make sure that I make room for those things and also build up my aluminum to create a rock formation kind of in the center of the diorama. Once I have all my tin foil in place in the exact areas where I want it and the shapes that I want it, I'm gonna take some of my ultimate white glue and I'm just smearing my white glue all over the top of the tin foil. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to lay some air dry clay on the top to really give the ground and the rock formation that I'm wanting. And it really helps to have a little bit of glue to hold down that, that air dry clay as it dries. Now you can use a couple different types of clay. I'm just using leftover DOS clay. I didn't have very much of it but I wanted to definitely use it before it completely hardened so I'm just gonna piecemeal it together and try to use this for the base coat of my landscaping here. I started with the rock first I just really draped that clay right on top of my aluminum foil and then I'm really piecemealing all the rest of the clay around the big rock. A lot of this is going to be covered anyway so I'm not as concerned about what it physically looks like um, although in this case it's kind of fun to have like divots and uh, have it very uneven just like the ground would be in real life. All right and then once all of that is completed I'm not really going to worry right now about the clay being somewhat wet and this is good because I'm going to start putting in a couple trees. Now you may recognize these manzanita branches. These are fake manzanita branches. I used these very similar ones for my poltergeist room recently in black and then they had them in brown and again these are very inexpensive and they're just so easy to use and easy to cut so i wanted to do that i wanted to use them again for this diorama now the one thing is uh for those of you who are huge et fans the forest scene is actually filmed up north in california in crescent city and it is filmed in the redwood forest these are obviously not redwood trees but i'm really okay with that because really for me i just want to make it outdoorsy i want to have it have a creepy effect to it and I want it to be fallish, <laughs> fall like. <laughs> so don't come for me. I know I'm not using the right trees for this diorama based on the movie, but I'm I'm okay with that. I hope you are too. All right, so I'm gonna glue them in. I'm cutting them down where I need to cut them just to make them all fit in. And I think about three manzanita trees are going to be a, a good amount since we kind of painted in those fake trees to the background. It actually looks pretty full. One of the things that I definitely want to do is make sure that one of the manzanita trees is 
sitting in the diorama to the side because I need one of the branches to come way out to the front and we'll talk about why I need that branch in a little while. You may already know why I need that branch to come out further in the diorama if you're a big fan of the movie. All right, so I'm using a combination of my hot glue and my white glue to keep these in place. And then I am going to let the air dry clay for the most part dry. It really doesn't need to be fully dry for the next step, which is of course to paint it. Now I'm just using some acrylic paints. I'm gonna do the stone, of course, and a couple different tones of gray. And for the surrounding areas, I'm gonna use a combination of browns. I'm gonna use some black. I'm gonna mix in some greens and then I'm gonna let that dry. And then as it dries, of course, the air dry clay is going to tighten. And when it does, it sometimes will crack and it will open up spaces where you can see white. So after it dries, I'm gonna go back in and I'll paint those areas also, anywhere where I see any white or lifting or cracking. All right, and now it's time to add some fake ground. So I am taking just my Elmer's clear glue. I could use white glue also, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna take my green tuft blend that I've used in a billion projects. I can't believe how long this stuff has lasted. I like this particular one because it is a couple different shades of green. You've got some dark and light mixed in, which is really great. It does give a very realistic look. I'm gonna start sprinkling that all over my glue in different areas and putting on some thicker in some areas and thinner in others. Now I'm adding a little bit more Elmer's glue and I have this sand and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of that sand in a couple different areas. The sand that I'm using is just vase filler and it's by Ashland and I got it at Michael's. All right, now let's talk about the leaves fall leaves. So I got a set of these fall leaves and I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in them. They come in these really great colors. So we've got a nice light green. which I'm gonna add in first to my tree branches. And I'm just coating my branches in my white ultimate glue and then sprinkling on the leaves onto each branch. And in some cases I am taking my tweezers and adding individual leaves in certain areas where I feel like it needs to be. Then we have these yellow fall leaves. These are really gorgeous. And I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing those in as well, as you can see here. And if you look too, you can see that a lot of leaves have fallen onto the base of the diorama, which I'm loving. I'm feeling like so far they look pretty natural. And if they stay in those spots and it still looks pretty good, then I'll just probably do a spritz of glue over the top to keep them in place. If I feel like there's too many in one area, then I'm just gonna take a paintbrush and just brush away the leaves that I don't wanna use. And then the last color that I'm gonna use is this orange color, which I absolutely love. That just screams fall to me. Again, we really didn't see much of this in the Redwoods in the movie, but I really wanted to add it. So now I've added some fall orange leaves as well, and then allowed some of those to fall into the base. There was this fourth color that came in the group, which is this very brilliant bright green, which I'm not gonna be using today, but gosh, uh, that would be so pretty in other applications. So now that the orange is in, all I've done is I've done a little spray glue over the top of the base and a little on the leaves as well, just to keep everything in place. Now I'm just gonna let that set aside and fully dry. All right, so while that does dry, let's talk about the ET phone and the antenna and satellite dish. I'm gonna call it the satellite dish. So in order to get that look, really need to create an umbrella which is what they which is what they use in the movie now i don't know the first thing about making an umbrella i guess technically right but what i do know about is drinking cocktails and i just happen to have this cocktail umbrella right here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to include this in the diorama but of course we need to make a few tad little tiny modifications of course it's way too long to go in the diorama so we're going to have to cut it down and you can see that it has a very tropical pink hood on it which i need to remove so i am going to very delicately remove this pink luau paper it's like a very thin tissue paper and i'm going to try to do it without damaging the internal mechanisms here of this pretty little umbrella 
All right, and then now that I've removed all the paper, pretty much there's a few little pieces that are still hanging on that I couldn't get off that I left because I just was kind of afraid of damaging it. <laughs> so we're gonna work with that. And then what I did was I took a piece of aluminum foil and I cut out the shape of an umbrella. Now the cocktail umbrella was too big really. So I just made, when I cut the aluminum, I cut it down to a size and then I kind of made it look like an umbrella shape. And now what I'm gonna do is glue that to the top of my umbrella. It looks like a cute little pinwheel. So now I just need to cut it down, cut those ends off so that it fits well. And then where I'm still seeing a little bit of the pink paper, I'm just going to take, hit those areas with my paintbrush and a metallic silver paint. Now there are a few other elements that we're seeing in the movie. You can kind of see like a coffee can and then what looks like I'm gonna guess is something that they use to kind of create like a laser. It looks like it has a little funnel, which I don't have, but I do have a coffee can that was in my little food stash and I've got a wire and I'm gonna wrap that wire around and then glue that to my stem. And then I do have this little spring that I kind of pulled apart a little bit to make it look like a laser. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue that right in place. Now, of course, connected to our umbrella satellite laser dish <laughs> is the notorious record player, which I have one right here. This is actually something that I 3D printed. Look at me go with the 3D printing. And then in the photo, you can kind of see here that they have a couple of other interesting elements on the record player. They have a, a hanger. So I'm gonna use my little metal one that I have here and they have a broken fork. So I'm gonna take one of these little forks and chop it down. They also have some rope and then they have also a saw disc, right? A circular saw disc on there also. So what I did was I went through my stash and I did find this little wooden piece right here, which kind of looks like a saw disc. It's not the exactly like we're seeing in the movie, but I think this is going to work. So I glued it down, painted, of course, my record player, and then I've glued in the hanger and also a little fork. There is also another piece that I saw in the movie that looks like a long metal comb, but I didn't really add it. And I hope it doesn't take away from this, but I think it's gonna work out okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down to my rock to make sure that it's glued down really well. You definitely don't want that to move. And once that is in place, I'm gonna take a little piece of this twine and I'm gonna start wrapping it around the fork and the hanger. And then this actually in the movie goes all the way up and they wrapped it around the tree branch. And what they did was they used the wind and, and as the wind moved the tree branch, it was moving the disc and the hanger and the fork, and then it was actually going through the speak and spell, which we'll get to, and it was sending the signal up through the umbrella. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that twine around our record player and then make sure it's nice and tied tightly into our tree branch, which is why I needed that one tree branch to come out into the diorama quite a bit so we could grab onto it with the rope. Okay, now what I also need is a wire that goes from the satellite dish over to the speak and spell. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that wire in first and then run it over to where the speak and spell would be. And then once we have that, we can finally add the speak and spell. So the speak and spell, basically, I found a picture of one online. I actually found one that said phone home on the, <laughs> and I thought that was super cute and I felt like I needed to use it. So I went ahead and cut that out and then I glued that down to a piece of wood. I'm gonna use that as my speak and spell and I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that right in the area where the wires come together and so does the rope. I'm gonna glue that down to connect the two items and then right on the face of the speak and spell, they put like some sort of speaker, additional speaker piece. And so I found this little broken piece of jewelry and I'm just gonna put that right on top of that speak and spell where that piece was in the movie to act as that same piece, whatever that's supposed to be. <laughs> we'll take a couple little close-ups of that. So the next thing I need to do is take a look at my original 80s Elliot E.T. toy on a bike. And I don't really wanna leave it how it is. I do wanna add a little bit more details to it. And so it's never gonna look incredibly realistic because of how it was made. But I do wanna add some shadowing, some shading, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of color to the blue jeans, some details to the shoes. I wanna add a little bit more color to his face and also, of course, to the E.T. And because the toy's kind of been 
exposed because the packaging was slightly opened. Some of that white plastic has aged a little bit and yellowed. So I wanna definitely paint over that as well. This really took me some time. I worked a lot on the face because a lot of the red from the hoodie had kind of blended into the side of the cheeks. And so I wanted to paint over that to kind of smooth that out a little bit. His eyes as well were a little bit difficult to paint because they had just done like a standard like dark brown. So I wanted to change that up a little bit. Of course, I'm not gonna do much to ET aside from add a little bit of color to him to make him stand out a little bit more. And so once I have him all extra painted, and so then I'm just gonna glue him in place finally. And then once he is in place, I do wanna add some more to the ground. So of course I have this sheet of plants. I bought this from the dollar store, the 99 cent store, I should say, RIP 99 cent store. And I've been using this for little shrubs and plants and some different dioramas. So I'm gonna cut off a couple of those pieces and add them around. I wanna add several in front of the bike because I wanna cover up how thick it is because of course it's one of those pullback bikes and I wanna hide that part of the bicycle. Another element to this part of the diorama that I would like to add is a little bit of Reese's Pieces. So let me know in the comments, do you say Reese's Pieces or do you say Reese's Pieces? I'm curious what you might call this candy. An interesting little movie tidbit when it comes to the Reese's Pieces is that Spielberg actually went to the M&M company and asked them if they wanted to be the candy that is, of course, shown in the movie, but they were kind of concerned about whether or not the movie would flop, and so they chose to pass. So then, of course, they went to Hershey's, and Hershey's jumped on board, and therefore that's why we're seeing the Reese's Pieces and not M&M's showcased in the movie. So what I did was I went online and I looked for a 1980s Reese's Pieces packaging, and I'm folding it and I wanna put it in the bottom of the diorama. Now, I wanna make it look like it's been sitting out there for a while. I'm kind of merging a couple different scenes together here, <laughs> but anyway, that's okay. I'm gonna add my little Reese's Pieces package to the bottom, and then what I'm using for the Reese's are some beads, and I, I had some orange beads, so I painted one dark brown for the chocolate colored one and then a yellow one. And I'm just gonna glue them right down here in the front so that it looks like maybe those have been sitting there for a few days. The only other thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna do a little matte spray paint sealer on the front just to keep Elliot and E.T. from any of their paint scratching off once it's dry. And then just real quickly, I wanna go back to the closet section of the diorama to the front of it or back, depending on how you look at it. And I wanted to add just a couple little things to the front. And one of those things is a bow holder. I don't know if you guys had any of these or one of these as a kid. I know I certainly did, but it was just a really long ribbon. And maybe at the top, it had some sort of topper. Maybe it was a bow at the very top, which is what I used here. I used a small metal bow and then I just cut a little piece of pink ribbon and glued it to that metal bow and then I added a whole bunch of other smaller ribbons to it so it made it look like this is maybe where Gertie keeps all of her bows. I thought it would be really cute to add it. You know Gertie is a big part of the movie. I think I was about her age or maybe a little bit younger than her when this movie came out and I don't know about you but I, I was definitely a bowhead in the 80s for sure. Had bows that matched everything. I'm sure some of you may not be surprised to hear that. The other thing I wanted to add is a little Peter Pan poster. One of the more precious scenes in the movie is when Gertie's mom is reading to her Peter Pan while E.T. and Elliot are kind of gathering all of their things in the closet to make the foam. Gertie's mom asks her, do you believe in fairies? And then they both say, Please. I do, I do, I do. And it's just such a cute scene because of course, um, here we are all believing in a little alien. Okay, and then the other project that I kind of touched on a little bit in the first video was the solar system project. I really wanted to incorporate some sort of old school looking solar system type of project that you would have probably done in the fifth grade. I had that bracelet, so I cut it and I took off all the beads. And then what I did was I took an earring that I have. It was something that I found in a haul and I'm gonna modify it. It already kind of looked like a little bit of a galaxy except that it wouldn't work for the Milky Way because all the planets are the same size and they'd all be the same distance from the sun. So I'm gonna take all of those off and then I'm gonna take some floral wire, re-thread the planets that I had from the bracelet, put them all together, glue it and hang it on the other side of the closet door. And there you go.
So I mentioned in the last video that I was going to tell you about the time I met Dee Wallace. And here we are. Here's a couple pictures of me with her. Now, Dee has been in some of my favorite scary movies. Of course, E.T. I don't really consider scary, but definitely it is a Halloween or fall movie that I love to watch every year. But she was also in Cujo, which she has in interviews said that that was a pretty miserable experience for her. But I love that movie. She did a great job. And then another kind of spooky movie is Critters, which I also love. And then one of my most favorite, favorite movies that I watch every year for Halloween is the movie The Frighteners and she is in that movie as well. A lot of times when you meet celebrities, they wind up being not as kind as we expect for them to be for some reason. And I don't know, maybe that says something about us, but she was just a lovely lady, very nice. She chit chatted with me and, and my BFF for quite some time. She came out actually behind the table that she was sitting at. She's very tiny. Um, and then we talked a little bit about some of her movies and what I really gathered about her is that she just loves doing it. She loves being in these movies. She loves taking on all these different kinds of roles and personalities and she's not afraid to step into a role that's like a little bit kooky or something. But anyway, as you can see here, she uh, signed this photograph of her and I did pick the one from E.T. If I ever meet her again, I'll definitely have her sign one from the Frighteners, but then she signed it to Whitney B. Good. And this is one of my cherished autographs that I had. It was a really lovely experience. And so that's my story of meeting D. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this two-part, double-sided E.T. the Extraterrestrial movie diorama. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I really do appreciate all your comments from the part one from the last video. It was so fun to read all your comments. Of course, this type of diorama brings you back great nostalgia, good, good memories. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so. Make sure to definitely leave a comment this week as well and put a thumbs up, like the video. It definitely helps the channel. Hope you guys have a wonderful, fun, and safe Halloween. Have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye!